Hey everybody, um, so I did a video recently on how to build DLLs in LabVIEW. Um, so I kind of demoed just creating some simple math functions, exporting those to a DLL. Um, this is similar to like your C DLLs, so they can be called by different languages. I also wanted to show in this video how you can create .NET uh, interop assemblies. So you can integrate that with different not .NET capable languages, so it could be uh, Visual Basic, it could be C Sharp, stuff like that. So and even LabVIEW, right? Um, any any uh, .NET capable uh, language. Um, so yeah, um, using these same functions, um, if you just go to Build Specs, go to New, there's an option for .NET Interop Assembly. So that's what you're going to want to select. I already have one that I created right here. Um, so it's very similar to creating the CDLLs. Um, I basically can specify my build spec name. So, um, oops, let's call it that. I also can specify the name of my DLL I want to create. So, just call it math. Um, I can specify the assembly namespace. Um, so, let's just, whoops, I don't know how I did that. Let's call it uh, lab math. How about that? And I can also specify the class name that I want to use with this. Um, and then where you want this build to actually go. From there, I can go to source files and I can specify all of the different VIs that I want to export to this. So I'm going to choose all of those. Um, rarely do you need to change these. If you needed to include some different you know, dependence, uh, dependencies and control different behaviors of that, you can. Typically, you're not going to mess with that. Same goes for these um, VI properties. Because this is going in a DLL, you don't really need to worry about the UI and stuff. There are some different options um, for you know debugging, stuff like that. Um, I'm just going to leave these as, it, as they are. There is one notable box down here that allow future versions of LabVIEW to load this .NET assembly. So, um, even though this is a DLL, it still requires the LabVIEW runtime, just like an EXE or anything else. So um, you will need a LabVIEW runtime. So for example, I'm, built, I'm in LabVIEW 2021 right now. Um, so I need a LabVIEW runtime of at least 2021. Um, if I have this box checked though, it will allow runtimes for LabVIEW 2022, 2023, 2024, etc. Um, to be able to run this code as well. Um, additional exclusions is similar to an EXE. You can customize those how you want. Version information, digital signatures, etc. So um, let's go uh, save this project now and let's build our DLL. So these build, this is going to build really quick. Um, so let's go to explore now. So you can see I've got my math DLL. It also generates this uh, XML file with basically details about my assembly. So now let's look at how we can connect to this .NET assembly. So just like any time we're working with uh, .NET, aside from like static methods, um, we're going to drop a constructor node. So let's drop that down. Let's go here and we're going to link it to my DLL. So you can see here's my uh, namespace, which I just called it lab math. You could call it whatever you wanted. Um, and then here's the specific class under that namespace that I've created. So lab math, um, oops, there, I don't know why it didn't work. But yeah, lab math. So now I've selected the constructor. Um, there we go. So now, um, if you notice, if I connect a property node to this, whoops, um, I actually have no properties. So all this has is methods to it, no properties. So let's go add an invoke node. Um, sweet. So you can see it automatically links up and we're also going to close this reference here. So I've created my constructor. I'm I, I set it up to call different methods in here, and then I'm just closing that reference out when I'm done. So you can see here, um, and these are actually static methods. So 
I actually don't need a constructor necessarily, um, and I'll show you that in just a sec. The little s there denotes that this is a static method, um, but it can add, it can divide, um, I can multiply, I can subtract, um, and it also includes some kind of default .NET functions like to string, get type, equals, get hash code, etc. Um, but yeah, I've got all these different static methods, so I can select add, and I basically get the terminals that I need to connect to that. So um, I'm actually just going to drop some constants here. So let's do maybe 5 and 2, and we'll output the sum. <clears throat> so I can run this code, and I get 7 as my result. So really pretty simple. Um, it doesn't have to be called in LabVIEW, though, like I said. I could be creating tools for people to use in Visual Basic, for people to use in C Sharp, et cetera. Um, so if there's something that LabVIEW is really good at, I can share that with developers or even myself when I'm developing in other languages. Um, I can go, you know, multiply, I can, you know, subtract and divide. So all my functions that I mapped, um, really pretty cool, really simple. Um, also just wanted to show um, if I drop an invoke node, um, because these are static methods, I can go to link, or sorry, select class, uh, vi server, vi, ooh, sorry, I'm thinking backwards. I've been two in a row. Okay, you go to .NET, and then I can either browse to find the assembly I want to connect to, or it will give me a list of stuff that's already in memory. Because lab math is already in memory, because I've dropped it down there, um, it shows up right here. So I'm just going to select that. And then I can just call my method without using a constructor. So constructor could be nice because if I'm using a bunch of these different functions all over the place, I can basically just run this reference through all of them. But it doesn't actually require that um, because I've defined these methods as static methods. So I can actually just call it right from there and it works just fine. So that would be basically how you can build .NET assemblies in LabVIEW. Thanks for tuning in. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.